Welcome to another episode of Donversations. Today we have Rihanna Milne. I almost messed it up. We just were talking about that. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Dawn. It's nice to be here. Yes. So this topic could be kind of serious, but I always manage to find a way to keep things a little bit on the lighter side. So I want sure. to start off. She she is an expert in trauma and relationships and how they don't go together and how you can fix the ones that you're in. So childhood trauma. How do you know if you've had childhood trauma? Because it it's kind of an overused word, in my opinion. Trauma is said a lot right now. It's a riot that it is a buzzword, just like narcissists as these buzzwords, yes, right? Yes. Because when I had got my triple master's in psychology in year 2000, and I was just listening to my master's thesis, which I got honors on, and the word childhood trauma was not used. It was oh. not a term. It was not a thing. So when I did my thesis on adolescence, because I am a counts trauma counselor in schools as well, I work with the emotionally upset kids oh. at every grade from kindergarten all the way through college. That was back in the day. Okay. So in my thesis, it was I had probably 300 people from the community of Atlantic City, Ventnor, and Margate. And I was helping those kids become more resilient, more confident, increase their grades, decrease the high-risk behavior, mm. and increase resiliency, which then increased their successes and increased their friends. So it was a six-month counseling, quote, coaching program. I mean, that's when I was having meditation and doing all this holistic mind-body-spirit stuff, this woo-woo stuff that nobody ever did. I love it. To help invoke change. And um, still, childhood trauma was not in part of my thesis um, that I was talking about, you know, if anybody goes through this kind of trauma, you know, but I didn't say the term childhood trauma. So that I'm like, wow, I thought my research was more like 2009, 10 and 11, but it wasn't. It went back to year 2000. Wow. And now it's almost 25 years in business. I've been doing this, helping people more self-love, more self-esteem, emotionally healthy relationships, succeed with a mindset for success. M mindset work I've been doing for over 40 years. And uh, I used to teach at Gannon University when I was a kid, like 23 years old. I was teaching in personal development, professional development classes, how to uh, use confidence, PR, marketing to increase your business, mm -hmm. how to grow a business with no money or no loans. You know, so I was doing mindset work there. Right. And then I had a talent, a model talent school and agency. And I was teaching the models and actors to succeed in modeling, singing, acting, or dancing, whichever they preferred. When all their family saying, you can't do that. You'll never get to LA. <laughs> nice you know, family. Great... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised at what our family messaging tells us. This is the, the reason. So Childhood trauma, when I was doing the bulk of my heavy research, was 2011, when I went through a love trauma. And I was wondering why I'm attracting these kinds of men that, you know, are nasty and um, dishonorable because I'm a nice woman. I have high integrity. I'm spiritual. I'm a great mom, hard worker, great business. Everything in my life was together. And then this, and I'm like, it doesn't match. So that research then, I was calling it childhood trauma. But I remember starting to talk about it on podcasts in year 2015. And I've had therapists say, you're making it up. It's not in the DSM-4, which is the mental health book that we have to follow for our patients mm -hmm. when we give them a diagnosis. I said, I know it's not, but it should be. Because 90% of people can identify themselves in this top 10 list. Right. So I put this top 10 list together and it came out in 2012. And that's when I was talking about childhood trauma. So it was brand new. I was called crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You're making it up. And now everyone's like, yeah, we have childhood trauma. And it's like, but in 2021, research showed that 100% of us do have one of the top 10 traumas. So um, let's talk about where those come from. <laughs> yeah. What are, what are they? they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, there are more than 10, number one. Number two, childhood trauma goes through at least three generations. Number four, it impacts seven primary areas of your life. Okay, so it's very impactful. Mm -hmm. And the most direct impact is childhood trauma unhealed causes unhealthy relationships. Right. So they are tied together. 
unfortunately. Well, okay. yeah, because they so don't just fall away. Right. Yeah. Like they're yeah. going to just stick around yeah. until you address them, I'm sure. Exactly. Exactly. So here we go to the top 10 and I'm pretty quick with this list. <laughs> the first one is if there's any addiction in the home. So I remember in 2016, 16, a large group called Kaiser Permanente, it's a hospital based group, came out with um, their trauma checklist and they were missing like five of mine. I'm like, did they miss that? Like <laughs> abandonment and bullying oh. and foster care kids who I took care of in hospitals who were so traumatized they were part of foster care. So to me, that was just like, they're just missing so much over here. Yeah. So I just stayed with my list, right? So, and it's a very easy list to understand. <clears throat> so addiction, because I'm also a drug and alcohol addictions counselor, I define more than just drugs and alcohol. And that's what they define. Well, if they had drugs or alcohol, you could have trauma. Mm -hmm. But there's more addictions like sex addiction. You knew your parent was a cheater, porn addiction, gambling, hoarding, spending, eating, gaming, TV watching, social media addiction. Wow. So if these addictions came before the primary care of the child. The child was just ignored. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of disconnect with the emotion. There's, it's actually called emotional abandonment. Oh, that's okay, so, sad. so that's one. Yeah. The second one is verbal messaging. So what kind of words did you hear from your mom and dad? Did you get compliments and hear, I love you. I'm so proud of you. Or did you not hear any of that? My baby boomer generation, I was on the beach in Florida and there's like nine of us all like 50s, 60s. And they're like, I never heard I love you. I said, me either. None of them did. Wow. Nine out of nine. And our parents were the generation of the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. So when I finally asked my mom this, she said, well, you know, it was all about survival. Emotions had nothing to do with that. If we were taken care of, that was love. Yeah. So we had a very tough set of parents. Right. And then maybe we got too luck lux with our, maybe we got too lax with our kids, right? Because we gave them so much and so much loves and hugs and kisses. So um, it's just really interesting how the generational yeah, differences. Yeah, that come is, up, that's right? fascinating. So that's verbal messaging. And also, how did your parents work out an issue? Did they yell and scream at each other? Or could they sit down at a table and work issues through? Really important in how you learn to communicate with a partner. Number three is emotional abuse or neglect. Number four is any physical abuse, rape, or molestation. Now, that could be inside or outside of the home. Okay, so this is all childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. It's not just with your parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is abandonment. And I named two types, fault and no fault. A no fault abandonment is just as severe, but it's not the parent's fault. Like if they happen to die early from an illness mm -hmm. or they're drafted for the war. Or like my dad, he traveled out of the house. We didn't know why, but we found out later he was FBI and CIA. But oh that's gosh. how he supported the family. And I remember saying, where's dad? When's daddy <laughs> coming home? My mom would say in disgust. I don't know where he is. And, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, it's this thing of, are they okay? This lack of safety, right? right? So, right. but that's no fault. That's how he supported us. Now, fault abandonment is never knowing your child or being in their life, being in their life till the couple breaks up, then you rarely see them. Or even you're in the house, but you're emotionally detached. You don't go to the kids' sport events or plays. You're just not emotionally connected. Mm. And when I had a full therapy practice, now I do coaching. But it was, you know, I had so many kids with this back and forth. They're like, I don't want to go to my dad's. He just sits there and watches football all day. Yeah. And I'm in my room on my computer. So there's no connection. Right. Right. So that's what I'm talking about. Fault abandonment. Okay. Now, the next one is around adoption, foster care, or if you had to go live at someone else's home, mm -hmm. even if it's a grandparent or an aunt, your family couldn't afford to keep you. Right. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people around uh, adoption, you know, consciously, well, that's okay because these parents really wanted me, but subconsciously it's like, but why didn't this one want me? Mm. So there's a lot of low self esteem very often in those that are adopted. Okay. Trauma seven is the one most people can relate to. It's called personal trauma. 
So if you've ever been bullied or felt different, um, maybe you're another race or culture in an all primary Caucasian school, you're coming out as LGBTQ and kids tease you for that. Um, anywhere where you just didn't feel good enough. You know, you might've been in special classes or identified as ADHD in the schools. And trust me, I know how those kids related to that. They were my kids often in my office, yeah. you know, I had the bullies, you know, the ones that are angry all the time. And, yeah. and then what was their home life like, right? So they would come in upset. Okay. So that's personal trauma. Number eight is sibling trauma. So how did you get along with your siblings? Very often, uh, someone perceives uh, the other sibling as the golden child, which is the favorite <laughs> one. Yeah. Okay. Use that term. So think <laughs> back. Yeah. Think back if you might have been that. Um, also, they could have bullied you or they were born with some kind of illness and your parents had to spend more time with them to take care of them. It's legitimate, but it still make, makes the other children feel left out. Yeah. Okay. Trauma nine is actually two traumas because I had to bring down trauma 11. When I made this list, trauma 11 was that, that big. And that's community trauma. And I brought that down several years ago because look at COVID impacted yeah. everyone in our world. Right. That's community trauma. Also our mother nature events, floods, fires, hurricanes, where communities are wiped out in totality, right? So it's a big one. And then that always impacts family. So number nine was family trauma. Okay. So that could be a parent was an incarcerated or you're part of the military family and had to move every two to four years. And that made you the new kid at school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you grew up in poverty or in a dangerous neighborhood. So there's a lot under each list, right? I'm just giving you right. short yeah, examples. Yeah, right. God. And then trauma 10 is any mental health mom or dad might've had. So anxiety and depression, that's it. That's easier than the two hardest ones are bipolar and borderline personality disorder. Now, borderline, I think, is the toughest. That's when they're good, they're great. But when they're bad, they're horrid. And you never know which one you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So it keeps a kid in high anxiety, walking on eggshells. And then bipolar is manic depressive. And people think, well, manic's a high and happy one. Well, it could be when it's a spending spree. But then the following month when all the bills come in, they're depressed, they don't pay the bills, or they go out and spend more. Right. You know, so these are the top 10 childhood traumas. Well, and you said, I don't even know if you said this before we hit record or after, but you were saying like most people have these, most people have at least one or two of these. And as you were listing them, yes. it's very true. Um, but I like, I wouldn't consider myself traumatized. I may have had a, like bull bullies in seventh grade or whatever. I remember it. Yeah. I don't feel like well, I'm traumatized for it, but if I start having like marital problems or something, it, could it be like attributed to that? Is that where you're going? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. So our child minds do whatever we can to soothe ourselves. So we either pretend it's not a big deal. You know, it's like, yeah, I didn't have any traumas. There's a couple bumps in the road, mm -hmm. but there was, you know, when you really think about, okay, yes, I did uncover that my father had an affair at 10 years old. We, I said to my brother, we can never tell anyone. So therefore I was the, the holder of the family secret, you know, right. and to me, that was a trauma, you know, so that was the sexual addiction of, outside of the home. The parent had an affair and you couldn't right. say anything. Right. So anything like that is traumatic. Um, so also kids like just pretend it's not happening um, or they lash out or, you know, by teenage years or self-medicating right. drugs, alcohol, right. they go get boyfriends to get out of the house. You know, they're trying to deal with it in the ways that they know how with no freedoms. Right. We have no car. We we can't just leave. So, you know, a lot of kids just get real passive and go to their room. Now, there are externalizers and internalizers. The internalizers are the kids that don't say anything, but they're in the room self-mutilating, right? Sure. They're cutting, mm -hmm. right? Or depressed and writing in journals. And then the externalizers are the angry, yelling, screaming ones that are right. mad at their parents. Okay. So you can see either way. Right. Right. Okay. Um, 
And all these instances are getting much worse in our society. It's funny, I just wrote an email today for my podcast Friday list. And it was on, you know, okay, it's graduation. There's a lot of celebration, but so many kids go into high anxiety. Like, what am I going to do with my life? I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have the money for college. Where am I going to work? Like, I have no experience. So they're like in this turmoil. Yeah, for sure. It's a breaking point. Gosh, I am. Yeah. My mind is exploding with questions for you right now because I'm thinking you have been in this for a long time, and clearly you said you started in the schools and all that stuff. But you know, like back yeah. in the day, not even you and I's day, like further, people would just sweep stuff under the rug. Like <laughs> we don't talk about yeah. that aunt or uh, that's the yeah. uncle that's not invited, but we're not telling you why. Like everything used to be secret, secret. And then now right, exactly. it's like people use social media and like Facebook's like people's diaries. And stuff. You're finding out about everybody's lives and it's, it's yeah. overkill. It's too much. It's I, not it's, what it's for. Right. Yeah, exactly. It right. is too much. Yeah. You know, I'm going to end it, you know, and then it's like, no, you know, da, 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 like reach out, get some help, you know, write me at my email. It's like, no, you know, um, there's centers for that, you know, to mm-hmm. call and get help. Right. But okay, let's talk about how this impacts relationships. Yeah, that's let's do. Part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if there's jealousy or control in your relationship, that's someone who has low self-esteem. They don't feel worthy. They don't feel good enough, pretty enough, even though that partner is doing everything they can to make them feel secure. This person is still not trusting their partner. So jealousy and control points to high trauma impulsivity. That's one of the worst for couples. Think about it. Cheaters are impulse people. Oh, she's interested in me. My wife wouldn't have sex yesterday. So (laughs) I'm going to go with it. Who cares? Nobody will know. It's just sex. Like that is the sociopath, narcissistic, impulsive mind. Okay. So the narcissist sociopath is at the high list of traumas with high severities and high impulse. Okay. So that's a dangerous one. People pleasing is something a lot of women do. So um, this is usually someone with a very difficult parent. So they're always pleasing, pleasing to get love and not get yelled at. And I remember having a woman that came into me as part of a couple. I do singles and couples. And she said, you know, nobody does anything for me. You know, I do everything for my husbands and their kids and their slobs. They don't pick up. They don't help out. The husbands are, well, I never asked you to do those things. You know, so one, he wasn't appreciative and she felt very angry and resentful for good reason. Right. But two, she kept giving, giving, giving to get his love. And it was the worst thing she could have done. Yeah. So I switched up that whole psychology. Oh, no, this will not be happening anymore. They want dinner. They can go cook. Right. So I get my people really strong and empowered and new boundaries And then they learn to speak up for themselves without yelling, without screaming. We call that empowered communication. Mm. My singles learn conscious, empowered dating. So they're not sitting around waiting to be chosen. No, we choose the partner we want that we feel we deserve. So there's a whole art in psychology to dating successfully. So whether it's a single or a couple, part A of coaching is always let's heal the traumas. Get your mindset right. That's huge. And then you have the skills that people aren't talking about for dating successfully to find the one Mm -hmm. or in relationships, reworking that friendships and different communication skills. Nobody's learned, not in college, because I didn't learn them there. I did in my master's. (laughs) I was like, it would be good if you taught us something we could use. (laughs) Um, This is all from my own research, right? Yeah. So, um, and then I went on to be advanced clinical trauma specialists so you know when they had that licensing and certification you can only get that when you're a licensed mental health counselor so you know people that want to be trauma recovery counselors just because they had trauma no that's a person that is not prepared yeah because it truly is a mental health issue and we all go through bouts of anxiety depression that's fine what's important is how fast do you recover 
So mindset is not staying stuck in a funk and negativity, ruminating on the guy that just cheated on. It's like, fine, you want that life? You're not for me. You're not what I deserve. Goodbye. And you never pick up the phone. You don't read text back. And so many people are stuck in what we call RRS, relationship repetition syndrome. You know, they yeah. break up their conscious mind knows this person's not good for me, right? And then they text and they beg and they bring flowers. But there's actually called the flower stage of domestic <laughs> violence, which is, this is a part of. And then they, the research shows seven to 14 days later, they get back together. And the average of back and forth, breaking up, getting back is seven times that people do this. Oh my God. So gosh. my people see the red flags and they're, oh, hell no. We move on. You know, so we're very strong emotionally. And we don't think about lashing out. Retaliation is just not for me. Next, I'm going to okay. find someone who is emotionally healthy. Right. So there's so many walking wounded out there that if you're single, you really need to know what to do with the art and psychology of dating successfully. So you have a great partner. Um, also, addiction is a part of this imposter sy syndrome for the actors and actresses. That's from childhood wounds of not feeling good enough perfectionism, um, OCD, blaming behavior, like someone who won't apologize. It's yeah. all your fault, right? They don't step up and accept responsibility. That's a high trauma person. That's also a sociopath, narcissist. It's always everybody else's fault. So yes, we all have something, but the important thing is we want partners that understand what their childhood traumas are, did some proactive coaching to heal it, understand it, and forgive it. My program's also highly spiritual, right? So forgiveness of the parents' actions is a big part of this, right? Because yeah. I could have been angry my whole life. My mom never said she loved me. And I'm like, I just want to find out why. So I'm fourth out of five kids. And I think I was, yeah, I was 24 and I finally went to her and I said, mom, I'm going to have your first grandchild. This is before you could tell it was a girl or a boy. Yeah. And I said, I would love for you to be able to tell your grandchild that you love them, but you've never said it to me. Can I ask you why? Well, you know, I do, you know, they're defensive. And I said, but why don't you say the words? She goes, well, I never heard those words. And that's when she said, we grew up in the great depression. It was all about survival. We were happy we had food on the table, you know, yeah. the whole walking a mile in the snow right, right. <laughs> in the same shoes you had for 10 years. Yeah, that was my mom's story. But I did have real love and compassion for her. And I said, Mom, I'm really sorry that happened for you. So I'm going to start telling you that I love you. So you get used to hearing the words. But maybe one day you'll say it back to me. And she did. And the day That's she good. did, I like dropped the phone and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and she was saying it then all the time. I call her real quick for something. Mom, I'm going to go here. That. Okay. Love you. I'm like, oh, thanks mom. Love you too. You know, so she learned to say the words to her five kids. And um, that was really healing for both of us. You see? Yeah. So this is when the children understand the story of the parents and have compassion this is what we call trauma recovery, rewriting the story. Okay. Okay. So we all have stories of our pain and this and that. Um, sorry, everyone. I'm fighting a cold. I'm, yeah, I'm doing the best. I know. I, I feel so bad making you talk like this. I'm just like, keep talking. That's keep okay. Talking. You know me. I just always will show up. That's just who I am. I so, love it. Um, yeah. So it's it's really healing, beautiful work. And when you're done that, we, we call, we're always aiming to live in the light, which is a spiritual concept. There is no darkness. There's no rumination. There's no depression. There's no anxiety. If something comes up and we're triggered, our mindset work knows exactly what to do to heal it. And then it's gone, you know, or if some catastrophe comes up, our mind is not like, oh, poor me, I'm the victim. Our mind is, what can I do, right? For example, COVID. When we in America, we're told you have to stay in for 30 days. Everyone's freaking out, angry, yelling. I can't work. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm like, wow, a whole month where I don't have to go out. What can I do on my to-do list? <laughs> so I wrote two <laughs> books, Anxiety-Free Living and Loving, 
and um, another one, happiness beyond your dreams. So I'm like, I'm going to use this time and get some extra stuff done that I've wanted to do. That's awesome. A lot of people out on the weekends. Such an interesting time. Such an interesting yeah. time that was where, like you said, some people were freaking out and other people took it as time to go in, within and, and deal with stuff that they avoided by being a workaholic or avoided or yeah. were forced to confront if they were in a crappy relationship. Like, well, we're home together now. Either this is going to work or yeah. it's not going to work. So how do you know if you're, if you feel like you might be in a toxic relationship, how do you know if you should oh, believe me, away? you know, Dawn, what's that? You know, you know, <laughs> well, if you no. should stay, I, I don't if you should stay it, or if you should, if you should get out, if you should go. Yeah. Okay. Um, most narcissists and sociopaths will not go to counseling or, uh, coaching and they will always find a problem with the counselor. A very good counselor will know what they're dealing with when they don't come back. It's like, mm -hmm. ah, well, you can tell within 15 minutes is blame, 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 blame. They did, they did, they did. And, and how about you? Well, because she did this, I had to do that. You know, it's all blame. And I'm like, okay, I know what I'm dealing with here. Yeah. But it's, they'll go through five, six, seven therapists they don't like. And he'll just put a Band-Aid on the relationship by giving her flowers and being nice for a while to get over the, you know, the argument. And then it happens again. Right. So, you know, really, you have to know what the red flags are um, on my website, uh, rihannamillam.com. It's my name is the red flag checklist. So if you think you're in a toxic relationship, it is free. It's under quizzes. Go take the test. Also on there is the childhood trauma checklist. And if you're single and you just had a breakup or a bad toxic divorce and you're like, I'm getting right back out there. It's probably one of the worst things you can do because you haven't healed your relationship trauma or the love trauma. So that's when people usually come to me after the third bad episode or second or third bad. It's like, okay, this is a cycle. I don't know what's wrong. I got to get this fixed. Yeah. And that's when they, they usually turn to me and, um, you know, you don't want to go out there and find the same kind of guy. It's RRS, same person, different face. Okay. Another toxic one, another, to and they'll read like a hundred self-help books. It's like, okay, I got it but they don't got it yeah. because the original wounds were never fixed. Okay. They, ne they were never healed. They don't have the confidence in the self-worth to go only for someone they deserve. This is what we call dating down. Mm. Oh, he loves me and he's sexy and he's hot, which we call falling in love by chemistry, which is the worst way to fall in love. Now this is brain science. So the brain, the front part of the brain, um, likes homeostasis, meaning it likes what it knows. So chemistry will always be a pattern, the patterns of what you knew from your past. Oh, so if there's okay. a little toxic stuff going on in your family, or, you know, you hear this over and over, a father cheated, you're going to end up with someone who cheated. It's like, why does that happen? I would never want to choose someone that cheated. Right. Why did that happen? And the chemistry is so strong, bringing you to the past situations. And that's what we call the subconscious is in control. So uh, why our programs are four to six months, we are doing trauma recovery where we make your world fully conscious and the unconscious is now overwritten. You're not impulsive. You think, is it good for me or the other? Why do I think this guy's a good match or why is he not? And you know exactly why. You know, all the dating skills, the do's and the don'ts. So many women are making mistakes. You know, so many women are using sex to get love and then they feel used because right. that's the worst way to get love, right. right? So it's there's so many mistakes out there. You really need to know what you're doing yeah. to find a great partner. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to talking about you for a second. Um, I Clearly you want to help people because you're yeah. helping all ages, all backgrounds, everything. Have you 16 to 80? 80. Have... Yeah, that's, it's amazing. And I applaud you for just all the different facets that you've gone through. What have you, have you reached what you want to be doing? Or do you feel like there's so much more, so many more people that you want to touch, maybe get away from the dating and focus on something else. I mean, you've gone so many different avenues. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to be 67 this year. Oh, so you look I amazing. Have, thank you. I have an, a fabulous guy 
we call each other fiance because I have a beautiful three oh, carat yeah. diamond yeah. ring. Um, <laughs> we call it commitment ring. <clears throat> and I am enjoying it slowing down a little bit. So, you know, I'm traveling more. We have a lot of fun on weekends. We have a big group of friends that actually I met on single cruises. I do have a travel company that I do transformation vacations. So I'd like to do more of that. Uh, it's called Romance International Travel, RIT. Um, I've written 13 books. So the book <laughs> thing is out of my system. <laughs> but right now I'm designing um, a course page where people can buy mini courses you know, that are more economical, so they don't work with me, or it's the first introduction to me. So I'm in the process of building that, learning AI. Um, and I put this very cool chat bot. It's called uh, Rihanna AI. And <laughs> it's uh, my picture. And you can ask it any question about relationship, trauma, anything on my website, RihannaMilne.com. And it's amazing. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I would say. But I fed it all my books, my ebooks, my podcasts. Oh my so has thousands and thousands of pieces of my teachings. And so someone can go and get a couple of answers. And if they want to work with me more, it's like you want to work with me more, you know, do a discovery session where I sit down with them for two hours and get to the basis of their childhood trauma, what's happening in their love relationship and put the pieces together. But at least it's an introduction to the work and the answers and how I teach. Um, so I like that. I'm that enjoying is learning. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. That yeah, is that's, so cool. And I did it all by myself, Dawn. I didn't even have to hire a tech guy for that one. I appreciate <laughs> that. Challenge. It's yeah, not it's easy. It's me. not. I for people that aren't techie, but they love to help and love to do things and create yeah. and all that. You're forced into it, and so people that just watch the videos all the time, they don't realize <laughs> it's a lot. You know of what it is? I'm. It is. I like to be on the cutting edge of what's new in my yeah. business. It was always that as a therapist, like when I had an office in um, the Ventnor, New Jersey area and down here in Delray Beach, Florida, people could come in in their pajamas, bring their dogs, they had gourmet co cookies and, and chocolates and jazz going and candles. Yeah. And it's like, I, I feel like so comfortable when I come in here. And I said, that's the idea. Right. You know, so what can you do different that makes your business different? And being a forefront in AI for me is cutting edge. So I'm never going to stop growing and learning. And I, I love Tony Robbins. He was one of my early yeah. mentors in my teens. I was reading him and he always said, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah, I believe. So that. even though I'm slowing down and only taking several VIP a year, which mm -hmm. is that one-on-one -on -one client. Um, I am still serving. I'm still giving emails. I'm still doing occasional podcasts. I'm still guesting on podcasts Yeah, because I love to educate, right? I figure, you know, you and I are helping to change the way the world loves. So right. it's an important message. I'll never stop teaching. So as a coach, I teach, which that's why I love mm -hmm. the teaching model yeah. because that's how people learn and they change and they grow. And then they get to the other side of the transformation rainbow. Yeah. You know, they're not going to keep dating these toxic people anymore. They're going to get the skills and the knowledge and counseling doesn't do that. Yeah. You know, and then my VIPs, they can email me, they can text me. So they're like, I'm a coach constantly seven days a week. If they need me, I'm there. Wow. So that is a VIP service, which coaching can do. Yeah. So I love it. That's why I, I think it's amazing. You're, VIPs. you're helping people with love, regardless it's, if it's loving themselves or loving them yeah. in a relationship, um, loving what they do, loving just life. It's phenomenal. I am so happy. I got a chance to talk to you. you. I just think it's so amazing. I will definitely, I'm a reader, so I will be finding your books oh, and good. reading your books. I can't wait. Um, so well, on my, on my website also, I didn't mention this, uh, under the book section, is live and love beyond your dreams, love beyond your dreams, break free of toxic relationships to have the love you deserve. It was a number one bestseller on Amazon when it came out. It was called The Guidebook to Love. Awesome. 400 pages. Wow. You know, and it is, I said, I have to make it different than anybody else's because this is, so the whole first part is what are the personality types you have to be sure to avoid and how do you see them early on? That's part one. Part two, we're in a nasty breakup. How do you heal from that? And how, what are you learning? Part three, getting back out there to date. Part four, what is the emotionally healthy, evolved, and conscious relationship and how to have that? So 
it's really very comprehensive. And then its sister book that goes along with it is Live Beyond Your Dreams from Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success. And that came, that one I wrote first, but they're meant to go together because without mindset, you're not going to have great love. Yeah. And you can't, you know, just read love to get to all the dating stuff and not have the mindset. You need both, right? So that's why my programs are always both. Um, And it was because I had so much research, you know, I was, I wrote my books and I'm like, God, I'm up to 400 pages in love. I can't write anymore. (laughs) So that's when I started writing my notebooks. One for singles, one for couples, one for teens, which is life transition. And that really worked out well, because now together we work as a team to heal Mm -hmm. their traumas. What they write down on the paper tells me what I have to teach them back. So it's very interpersonal. It's very much geared to what they need to learn to be successful out there in the dating room or in the relationships with their partner. So yeah. say what your website, I know you said it's your name and I'll put everything in the show notes so people know exactly yeah. where everything is, okay. but just tell them just for people Perfect. listening. Yeah. Rihanna Milne.com. R-I-A-N-A-M-I-L-N-E. Um, yeah. And there's all kinds of goodies. There's a free ebook on the homepage, the book chapters, the tests. Um, my podcast is called Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. And I have 125 shows out on every podcast platform awesome. right now. So, well, well, thank you yeah. so much, especially with you not feeling good. I, I loved your message. Right. I'm so excited that I get to share it. So I appreciate you being on, even though you were under the weather. Um, and it was such a pleasure to meet you too. I just, I feel Thanks, like Dawn. I learned so much. I'm so happy your mom got into the, I love you thing. That's, that was like the best Story. There's a lot there, man. You know, when you have five kids, there was sibling trauma. You know, the brothers were the golden child. Like I could easily identify mine. You know, it's like, yeah. And then, but working with all these kids and all the schools, and then yeah, I was working like in mental health ward for kids five through nineteen, suicidal kids, the cutters, the severe depressed, you know, so I had, you know, then I worked in a drug and alcohol facility. Yeah. Women from the prison system were there. So, you know, my populations, no matter their culture, their background, the economic status, their age, man, woman, straight, LGBTQ, right. this program works. Yeah. And that's what was so exciting. Like, wow, I can heal this trauma for this lady who's 65 and lived on the streets. And this boy who's 17, you know, and it's just mind blowing. I mean, I'm still, I love what I do, you know, and if I can always improve it, I'm always looking for ways to improve a new education um, in this field because it is a newer mental health right. science. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much. I Thanks, appreciate Dawn. your time. Appreciate it. All right. And Thanks we'll be in touch. Me. Thank you so All much. All right, hon. All right. Thanks, bye-bye. everyone. Take care. <laughs> bye.